Yo, what's good? It's your boy El Zai, representing hip hop to the fullest. And right now, you're looking at Hard Knock TV. Yeah. Shake me out, y'all. It's El Zai in your area. About to back slap and bury it. Check it. Now let me show you how I blaze it. Leave niggas in the basement. I waste spit. Shit trickier than the maze get. Everything I drop raw. Cut you like a chop saw. You should stop like when the cop draw before he pop, y'all. You get your Ford crush. Acting out of shorts and don't support us. You must snort dust riding the short bus. Was there a particular song or artist that made you want to start rhyming? I would say one of the artists that uh, made me want to start rhyming was uh, Ice Cube. Like, um... Like from America's Most Wanted to like uh, Kill That Will to like Death Certificate. I'm like some of my favorite albums, man. Like the pictures that he painted was so vivid. Like he was, you know, the way that he was rhyming, you know, the words he was using and just the concepts and just everything, man. I mean, that to me at that moment in time, he was like the ultimate MC. Was there a particular time did like somebody play you something or do you remember where you were where you heard that and you're like you know what i want to i want to try this i want to run uh well what happened was uh like i had my cousin uh go to the store for me you know they to, to pick up d nice and uh and they i guess they didn't have d nice he ended up picking up ice cube you know what i'm saying um i knew ice cube from nwa so I wasn't really tripping like that. So uh, I just played it and for the first time. Like it just that was just the album that like blew my mind. Like from the intro to the to the outro, like it was ridiculous. My real hands a paragraph addict. I'll kill the airtime. Compare it to asthmatic. Yeah, it's like that. You know it's like that. I'm who you internet haters want to strike at. Did you like take particular MCs and kind of break down their styles and like figure out like oh man I like the way he breaks up these patterns or I like the way like did you do that kind of stuff? Oh, man. I mean, like, it started off as just, you know, like being a lover of music, man. Like, like listening to Rock Kim, like, you know, just like kind of sitting like with my head on like the stereo and, and two speakers, like, you know what I'm saying? Like left and right speaker, like just, just affecting my ears with the music, man. And just, just the love of it just kind of made me subconsciously study it. And then when I took a hand at it or took a stab at it, it was cast like Lord Finesse that that I started breaking down as far as like the way that they was uh, doing metaphor, where he was doing metaphors and how he was like coming up with like patterns and, and the words that he was using. And it just made me want to take it to another level. Talk about shadow boxing and mirrors and that kind of stuff. People who aren't familiar, like what, what, does, what does that mean? Uh, well, those are terms that I came up with for like some of the patterns that I use. Um, and I, I got like a lot of names for like the patterns that I use. I mean, they just, you know, they are part of my recipe and who I am, you know, and what I do and 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 my, my template, you know what I'm saying, for which I use for like the rhymes that I write. Uh, now I remember like in uh, the video for Memory Lane, like th there's uh, some images from uh, the hip hop shop. Yeah. Um, t tell us a little bit about that story. Like I, I just feel like there's so much history there. Can you maybe uh, tell us about the first day you walked in and kind of like what, like what you saw when you walked in? Oh man. Um, well, you know, at the time, like, you know, like I was, I was like mad cocky, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I was, I was young, mad cocky. I, I took out everybody in my lunchroom on some rap shit. And like, they've been telling me about the hip hop shop. And I'm like, really? You know, it, I've, I've been hearing it like, like numerous amount of times. And then finally, like one day, like they just like, like just grabbed me up, me and my crew you know, at the time. And, and you know, we, we walk up in there. I didn't really know what to expect. I wasn't really expecting much. But when I like opened up that door and walked into the shop, it was like, it was like a piece in New York. It was like the essence of like, you know, like hip hop, you know, like from the posters to like the, uh, you know, the clothing to like the people I saw. Like, I mean, it was cast with, you know, dreads and Akari shells and cast with the Scullies and Brims. And, you know, they bumping Mob Deep and, you know, the first person I saw rapping was Obi Trice on the mic. So I kind of like walked in on him like rapping, like, 
he had on a little fatigue coat and everything, and the Scully, you know, spitting and proof right there, like, and it was, you know, from 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 the first from the first sight, you know, what I'm saying it was just like, oh yeah, that's where I need to be. Is that where you met Proof? That's exactly where I met Proof. Yeah. Talk, talk about how that uh, relationship developed. Like I read that you guys were, were close. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, Proof was my man. Um, you know, because I was like one of the young youngest cats up in the hip hop shop, like doing my thing, and he recognized it. You know what I'm saying? And uh. And we got cool. And so, like, probably, like, the fourth time I went up in there, you know, I got his number. And we started, like, kicking it over the phone about patterns and, you know, double syllables. And, like, you know, talking about cats like Big L and, you know, AZ and, like, Nas. And um, he really helped me out, man. I mean, he really looked out for me, man. Miss Nash kicked me out because I'm not a kiss ass So I visited places where spots got shot on a daily basis Where kids pull triggers with baby faces Wait, I must be on the wrong side of the lane trail Where they rob memory banks and end up in the brain cell Where all my misery and pain dwell I'm set to leave out my state of mind before the train bell So now it's time to go I threw the deuces up the deal adapt up 10 And then I hug my mama slow Now, I heard that through proof you met him, but it was through the phone or something? Like, uh, can yeah, you tell that yeah, story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah. He had hit me up one day with Eminem on a three-way. And uh, he had Eminem spit for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never met Eminem before in my life. Like, I guess he was trying to, like, introduce him to, like, the scene, you know? So I probably wasn't the only one that he had called and, uh, and had him spit for, but since I was like one of those guys at the shop, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, yo, let me just hit up. I guess he was just like, let me hit up L, see what L think about M. And then after he finished rapping, I mean, of course the rap was dope. And he told me he was white. I was like, okay, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you or M ever got a chance to, to collab or like work together? Or has he ever approached you about like signing to Shady? Or like, I feel like two of the most lyrical cats in Detroit, like at some point, like there's gotta be some kind of like crossing <laughs> of the path. Or... I mean, you know, like, you know, I used to go to M's house parties and, you know, I used to kick it with him. Um, uh, but at one point, like around like 96, 97, like Paul Rosenberg, who was M's manager, he was managing me as well you know for a little bit i mean it wasn't really that official like we didn't really like sign any papers or whatnot but he kind of took me under his wing he like flew me out to like new york that was the first time i met the alchemist and um that was just before eminem was about to blow but uh no nah, no nah, i haven't i haven't talked to emma seen em in years man like since like the eminem show so Okay. Yeah. I figured when he started the Shady roster, I'm like, first cat I would have called, I was like, yo, shit. <laughs> nah, but what's, what's interesting is I remember being up in the studio with him, and uh, I was telling him about Royce. And I was like, yo, you need to mess with Royce. Like, y'all need to get on a song together. And uh, I think M was like, you know, I, I mean, M, you know, he was like, he was like, Royce is dope. At the time, he was like, Royce is dope, but I think our styles is like a lot similar. Or similar. I was like, man, y'all need to still get on a record together. And, like, I think the first record they recorded was uh, Bad Meets Evil. So I was happy to see that. Now, speaking of Royce, the last time we interviewed Slaughterhouse, mm. Royce and Joe were, like, the most slept on cat, hands down, Elzai. Oh, right. why? Why do you Good think luck. that is? Why do you think, like, you're slept on? Like, I feel like the, the talent <laughs> is there. Everybody <laughs> knows knows the talent is there. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the outlet that you know as far as like where people know me from like slum you know what i'm saying i don't think slum was really known for like being lyrical like that um uh you know i don't know man i don't know i, th I think i think it's i think that might be part of it but um you know i don't know what to say about that man i mean i'm just you know i i, I do it for the love you know i do it for you know i, I do it because uh you know, I want to play a part in hip hop, and um, I don't know. Maybe it's because you know the promotion hasn't been there yet, or like it could be a numerous amount of things. Mm -hmm.